Hello everyone. Just yeah. Okay. Hello everyone. Do you hear here as well? Yeah. Super. Uh, we leave you like 30 seconds in order to scan the QR code. You can directly ask your questions and we will answer it at the end of our talk. Thanks. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this Odoo Masterclass about the e-commerce logistics. My name is Chloe, I'm business analyst and website expert. And my name is Antoine, I'm also a business analyst but I'm an inventory expert. So, this is the agenda for today. First, we will introduce to you the use case we will work on together. Afterwards, we will deep dive into Odoo in order to show you our e-commerce flow but also our logistics flow. And finally, we will end this talk by a Q&A session. So, today, Chloé and myself are working at the Cidrerie du Condro, which is a charming Belgian cider mill company, working very closely to with the nature and producing cider without any chemical, uh, chemical inputs. So, recently, uh, our cider has known a big success abroad, so we are now selling on the European market, and for Christmas, we are planning to launch a new box, which you can see on the slide, um, containing either three uh, uh, ciders for the small box or even six ciders for the large box. So at La Cidrerie du Condro, I'm in charge of the e-commerce and Antoine is managing the stock. Our objective here is to make sure that everything is ready up and running for the coming Christmas period and the launch of our new Christmas box. So we will go to our flow together to make sure that everything works as expected. Yes, and so here are the different activities that we will go through together uh, because we have to make sure that we receive first the order from uh, the e-commerce but afterwards we will have to be sure that we are able to send the product to our customers. So this will be our workflow and we will go through each of these steps in order to be sure that we are up and running for the Christmas period that is arriving. And we'll take the opportunity to share some expert advices with you. Okay, Antoine, so let's start by making sure that everything is ready when it comes to the e-commerce. Yeah. First of all, something quite important, m the products must have been created in Odoo in order to be displayed on the website. So as we just said, the coming Christmas period is going to be very busy, so I already created my product, so my new Christmas box uh, in Odoo. Let me show you. So here, as you can see, I can access my Christmas box from the back end. The back end means the non-visible part for the website visitors. And so here I can see that this Christmas box is available with two, three or six bottles. To manage this in Odoo, we decided to create two kits. So one kit per, uh, per option. So here the idea is to make sure that when we are selling a Christmas box, the right quantities will be taken from the stock. So if we sell a Christmas box of three bottles, we will take from the stock a Brut Cider, a Condrine, and a Condro. So now if we go back on the product uh, in the back end, we can easily go to the website by clicking here and access the front end preview. Front end means the visible part for the website visitors. From here we can decide to publish or unpublish our product. So in this case I keep it published. And so when the visitors will arrive on this product page, they will be easily able to go back to the main product catalog by clicking on all products or clicking on the shop menu. So here as you can see, the visitor can see all the products um, which are available in our store. So in order to choose the perfect product, a customer will first search for the product he is interested in, okay. then check the, check the availability of those products, and finally decide to add those products to its cart. Okay, uh, just Chloe, I'm wondering uh, about something, but this year do we plan to sell to individuals as well as to professionals? 
Yes, actually, at La Cidrerie du Condro, we are most, mostly selling to B2C customers online, but we are also selling to B2B customers. So, of course, we will let them buy our new Christmas box. But we just need to make sure to, that we, we manage those two types of customers differently. Okay, and what do we have to, to manage differently, actually? So actually, the purchasing process is different depending on if it's a customer, an individual customer or a professional customer. Okay. So usually, uh, B2C customers will arrive on our website, browse our product catalog, take their time and explore every product. And they are strongly influenced by the design and the communication of our, product, uh, of our web pages. So what I could do, for example, here for B2C customers is to edit my, my shop page and decide to highlight my new Christmas box. So I'll just put it bigger. I can save. And here, as you can see, oh when nice. a customer will arrive on uh, the shop, he will directly see this new Christmas box. Something else I could do for B2C customers is to um, come here on my home page. As you can see, I created a dedicated section to highlight my Christmas box. And from here, I can decide to add a shortcut so the customer will be able to directly add the product to its cart. So if I click here, I just say that if somebody clicks on this uh, button, the Christmas box will be added to its cart. So that's super easy. Nice. The customer don't even need have to, to go on the shop page. So that's regarding the B2C customers. Now for the B2B customers, usually when they arrive on a website first, they log in because they have access to preferential prices and so they want to see those prices. To do so, you can just make sure that all your customers have access, your, all your B2B customers, sorry, have access to uh, the right price list. So here, as you can see, my B2B customer has access to the B2B price list, so that's perfect. Um, what else regarding the B2B customers? Uh, usually they know exactly what they want to buy on a website. So to help them, I decided to display on the product page here the internal reference of our product. Nice. So if they are looking for a specific uh, reference, they can just decide to search for it thanks to our search bar. And here, as you can see, the right product will be auto automatically uh, displayed. To do so, I just, just a minute <laughs> to do so, I uh, went here in my website and I decided to add an extra uh, field, which is the internal reference okay. on my product page. So that's super simple. Okay, that's nice. Do you have uh, any other tip maybe for B2B customers? Yes, one last tip if you want. Um, we can activate something from the setting, which is called the reorder. So if you activate this option, uh, the customers will be able to reorder the same quantities as uh, they ordered before. So they just have to go here on their account, click on sale orders and take an old sale order. And from here, they are able to click on order again and they can still change the quantities of the products if they want to. So that's super easy. Okay, that's nice. Um, so here, if I understood it well, uh, the customer found his products, mm -hmm. but now uh, I guess they have to know a bit more about the availability of our products. So how did you decide to, to manage this in Odoo? Uh, actually, I had many options in Odoo, so I'll show you what I decided to do and let me know what you think about yeah, it. Yeah, let's do okay. that. Okay. So if I go here on the shop page. As you can see, when a customer arrives here, he will directly see that this uh, extra brut cider is out of stock. So if I click on the product, I still see that the product is out of stock, so that's very easy. And here I decided to don't let the customer buy the product if the product is out of stock. I had the option in Odoo, but actually it doesn't make sense for us because we are only producing once a year cider, so it's going to take a long time before the delivery. So instead, I decided to display a message to say that we are sorry, this product is out of stock, and the next release is planned in April. Nice. And something else that's quite interesting is that the customer can decide to get notified when the product is back in stock. So you just have to click here. Here, as you can see, my uh, email address is auto-completed as I'm connected. So I can just dis click here and I will receive a notification when the product is back in stock. That's very easy. Yeah, this extra bit cider has definitely too, too much success. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So now let's take another example. Uh, let's go on the Condrine. 
Here, as you can see, I decided to display that we have only uh, X units, so three units left in stock. The idea is to create a sense of urgency for the customer uh, okay. and help to sell faster. Okay, nice. Okay. So the product selection part is yeah, almost done? Yeah, it's done? almost done. Yeah. Actually, uh, we still need to check the, the add to cart part. Okay. Nice. So here, when the customer will be convinced by your product, he will ob obviously decide to add the product to his cart. And he can either click on uh, buy now or on add to cart. Okay. If he clicks on buy now, it will directly be redirected to its cart and will be able to process the, the order very fast. Otherwise, if he clicks on add to cart, I decided to let the option to the customer to either go back to the shop page to continue buying or to uh, proceed to checkout and uh, process uh, the order. Okay, nice. I'm just wondering because we have to be sure that everything is okay for the Christmas period, but do you know if it has any impact uh, when a customer adds a product in his cart like that? Uh, yes, when a customer adds a product to his cart, it, it creates a quotation in Odoo, but the stock is not reserved. Still, there is a mechanism that uh, avoids having two customers buying the same product at the same time, so the same unique unit of stock. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. I guess the product selection part seems uh, now to be under control, so that's pretty pretty good. Let's go on to the to the next part, yeah? Yeah. So let's check together the checkout process. So when a customer arrives in its cart, he will, uh, of course, make sure that everything is correct, then uh, enter his address and other information, uh, and finally decide which delivery and payment methods he wants to use uh, before the confirmation of the order. So let's okay. do it together to make sure that it works. So here everything is okay for me. I can click on process checkout and here as you can see, as I'm connected, Odoo already knows my address so I don't have to complete it. Still I can go back on it and decide to edit my billing or my shipping uh, address. Uh, I also had the opportunity to decide if I want to use the same billing and shipping address or to use two different ones. Okay, okay, nice. Uh, you just showed us the extra info section. Uh, is yeah. it a good idea to keep this for Christmas? Uh, yes, actually we decided to add this extra info section to let the customer uh, add any remarks okay. if he has some. But uh, of course, uh, it adds a click or a step okay. before the confirmation of the order. So it completely depends on your strategy and on your business. Okay, but actually this could be useful for us as well because we could like add, uh, for example, a field on the orders with the delivery date wanted from the customer and we could ask directly um, the delivery date, the delivery date um, there during the checkout. Yeah, so indeed. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It could be yeah? a good idea. Mm -hmm. So now if I click on next, here I can choose my delivery method. So I have the choice between uh, pick up in store and B post. Uh, those delivery methods depends on the customer's country. So here, as I'm located in Belgium, I see those two different uh, delivery methods, but otherwise I would see other delivery methods. Um, so let's keep pick up in store. It's okay for you? Yeah, it seems perfect until okay. now. And now regarding the payment methods, uh, it's the same. So it also depends on the country as we are in Belgium. I can I can decide to either pay online or uh, pay at store. So okay. uh, let's pay at store. Okay, but and yeah. just here I see you yeah, uh, giving the possibility to, to pay at store. It means paying later. Is it really a good idea? Yeah, uh, actually paying later means that uh, the, the quotation in Odoo won't be uh, confirmed okay. and the stock won't be reserved. So indeed it can be annoying at some point, okay. but still it allows more flexibility because we can still edit the quotation afterwards in the back end. So at La Cidrerie du Condro, we decided to keep this flexibility. Okay, perfect. So let's click here to try to confirm and see if it works. Yeah. Okay, it worked. That's perfect. Um, I think it's now time to, to check a little bit uh, how we can manage our orders to be sure that everything mm -hmm. is up and running. Uh, first thing, um, I know that our sales uh, reporting department wants, really wants to know uh, a little bit more about the types of orders that we receive. I don't know if we can uh, do this in Odoo. Yes, of course. So here, if you are in the website application, you can click on e-commerce and you have three menus. The first one, orders. In this one, you will see all the orders coming from the website and that have been uh, confirmed and paid online. 
Okay, so the status in Odoo is sale order. Then uh, you have the unpaid orders. In this menu, you will see all the orders coming from the website, uh, confirmed by the customers, but not paid online. So the status in Odoo is quotation sent. And finally, you can find the uh, abandoned cards. And here you will see uh, actually all the customers who added something to their card, but mm -hmm. never processed checkout. Okay, okay. Um, just one thing for those abandoned cards. This might uh, be um, this might be maybe a problem for the um, the Christmas period. So, do you have maybe an advice to reduce that abandoned abandoned cards rates? Yes, actually, yeah. in Odoo we have an option to try to reduce the the abandoned card rate. So we can go here in the configurations and uh, look for. Yeah, uh, to send actually the idea is here to send uh, automatically a reminder for all the abandoned cards, and you can decide after how many hours you want to send it. So that's super super cool. Okay, nice. Um, I think we can now uh, dive into our orders mm -hmm. to be sure that uh, everything oh, is good. working properly. Um, oops. Just yeah. So if I understood it well. Um, here, the our customer paid thanks to the, the paying later, mm -hmm. so it created a quotation, which is more flexible. Yeah. And then if we confirm the quotation, it creates a sale order. Exactly. Uh, but if he pays directly online, then it creates directly a sale order, right? That's it. Okay, perfect. Um, let's now dive in into Odoo with our uh, unpaid orders that was just created. Okay. So as you said, it's um, uh, more flexible to use um, a quotation here because I'm still able to modify things. For example, here for us in the warehouse, it's super handy because I'm, for example, able to choose the warehouse that I want to use in order to deliver my products. That's the first thing. Other thing that is really useful is the fact that I can still modify a route on the sale order line here. So for example, here um, I could modify, uh, yeah, just choose the route uh, that I want. Mm -hmm. Um, what we are doing at the Cidrerie du Condro is that when we don't have a product in stock, we don't want to lose delivery uh, time. Um, so we are using drop shipping. It means that our supplier will, di will directly send the product to the customer. So it's super handy. And actually, we received an order this morning, and I think I can directly go in it. And uh, yeah, here from Gaetan Chao. Um, I can uh, directly modify here the route and use the drop shipping and confirm. And thanks to that, you can see that here above, we it already created a purchase for the supplier, and mm -hmm. he will know that he has to send the product yeah. to the the customer directly. And also, if you go back on the the order we just created, I think that you can still change the delivery method. Uh, as it's a quotation and not a uh, yes. confirmed yes, order. Yes, that's completely right. So I'm still able here to uh, modify the delivery method if I okay. want to. Here I won't do it because the customer has chosen a pickup at store, but it's, uh, it's clearly uh, a good idea. Mm -hmm. So now I think that everything is okay with this quotation. Um, I'm just wondering what are the m multiple ways of confirming a sale order? In um, so actually the customer the can sign and pay his quotation online thanks to the portal. So if you go on the portal, yeah. yeah. Okay. You can see that the customer can sign it directly and it will confirm automatically uh, the order in Odoo. Okay. Otherwise, you can simply uh, confirm it manually. So if you go back in the back end yeah. and here click on confirm. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. That's, uh, that's super nice. Uh, now that uh, our order is confirmed, uh, we can see that we have a little truck above, which means that we, can, uh, we are now ready to deliver our products. Um, so I will just... Yeah, take it here. But uh, before we are going to to the warehouse in order to deliver our products, I just want to be sure that we are okay with the the invoicing part. So, um, do you know how we can uh, proceed the uh, the creation of the invoice in Odoo and so on? Yes, yes, of course. So actually, it's the accountant's job to make sure that all the invoices are correct. But my team is responsible of creating creating the orders uh, the invoices for the orders coming from the website. So we had the option in Odoo to either invoice what has been delivered or the quantities that has been uh, ordered by the customers. And here at La Cidrerie du Condro, uh, we decided to 
invoice what has been ordered because we always uh, deliver exact the exact same quantity as the quantity ordered by the customer. But sometimes for other businesses, that could be interesting uh, to only invoice what has been delivered because it's not always the exact same quantity. Uh, okay. Also, there is something else that we can do is to uh, send and create and send automatically the invoice uh, for the orders coming from the website, but that's usually used for uh, B2B oriented businesses. So in our case, we don't do it, we create it manually. Okay, nice. So what you can do is to click on create invoice, okay. decide if you want to invoice part or all the quantities, okay. and then uh, click on create, and that's it. Okay, nice. Uh, just one word about uh, the delivery method here. It all depends on what you set up on the service related to it. So here, on the on-site picking, we decided to put the prepaid, um, to put it as a prepaid service, and to bill on ordered quantities. So we are already able to bill it, uh, and I will leave it like that for the accounting department. Then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, if you don't mind, I think we are ready for uh, the invoice and so on. Uh, I would like us to go into the warehouse mm -hmm. in order to be sure that everything is uh, okay for the, the Christmas period. Uh, just to give you a context, we are um, yeah, selling uh, with the um, uh, B-Post and uh, with uh, we are delivering sorry, our products with B-Post and with Pickup pick at Store. The Pickup at Store is really easy. We just pick the products and we give it to the customer. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, um, for B-Post, we really have to prepare our orders. So we first have to pick our products, then we have to pack them and uh, we will have to ship them afterwards. Okay. Um, something else, uh, as I said, we are uh, getting bigger and bigger. It means that our uh, warehouse is also getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So we now have three uh, different storage locations, which are a bit far from each other. Uh, we have one storage location for the Condrin, one for the Condro, and one for the Bootsider. So we will have to think about an optimized way of uh, picking our products. Okay. 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 okay, so let's go together in the warehouse. Uh, tell me how I can help you. I just want yeah. really to make sure that everything is working perfectly as uh, it's going to be very busy. Yes, it's mm -hmm. true. It has to, to work perfectly. Uh, mm -hmm. perfectly. And our uh, Christmas boxes are sure to be a big hit. Mm -hmm. So here we have to think about the best way of picking um, the different products. Uh, but the first thing we have to do is that we are selling edible products. So we have to track our products. And we also have to be sure that Odoo will tell us to take the products that will uh, that will expire first in our stock. So do you have an idea of how we can yeah. Do this in uh, yes, maybe we can use serial numbers. Um, actually, here we will use batch, um, a lot, lot numbers, number. sorry, mm -hmm. lot numbers, because we are producing uh, our products in lots. Uh, and we will use a removal strategy. So removal strategy is uh, the idea of how we will um, remove the products from your stock. Mm -hmm. And we will uh, use the uh, st strategy FIFO, so which stands for first expired, first out. And thanks to that, Odoo will first uh, reserve the product that will uh, um, expire first in our stock. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, then let me show you our orders. Here, as you can see, we have the order with the on-site picking. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one step. Uh, we just have to deliver the product in one step. And if I take another quotation, um, let me, uh, another sell order. I will go in the web shop, take one that is uh, already a sell order, the 35 here, for example. Here, as you can see, we are using B-Post and we have a delivery in three steps. So if I click here, I see that I have to pick, pack and ship my products. Um, I was able to do this thanks to a new feature that is now available in Odoo. Uh, if I go in on my shipping methods here, Mm -hmm. You will see that, for example, for my pickup at store, I can now choose a route on the delivery method. And here I have a delivery in one step. As for B-Post, it will be a delivery in three steps. So okay. it's super handy. Mm -hmm. And so now, um, if you don't mind, we will take care of the order that is um, unpaid. Uh, that is now an order. Mm -hmm. It's uh, this one, right? Yeah, with the Condrin and exactly. the on-site picking. Yeah. So now if I go on my delivery here, you can see that um, the product that was reserved is the lot 0201. 
Now, um, this is also super handy from uh, the new version of Odoo. I'm able to modify this reservation. It's super flexible, so it's, uh, it's super uh, handy for us in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, it reserved a lot 0201 because it's the first one to expire. Okay. And if you don't mind, we will take care of this um, order immediately. You can take the Condrin 0201 uh, from the stock. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And also, don't forget to make uh, make it sign uh, because we have to. Yeah, the the customer has to sign the order, and so uh, you can directly uh, do it, please. Okay. Thank you. Hello, here is your order. Can you sign it, please? Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. It worked. So now I can validate uh, this delivery, and everything is now done. Okay. So perfect. So now everything is done for the customer coming pick up uh, keep pick up uh, its uh, bottle. So that works perfect. But still, I have a question regarding the other uh, kind of customers, the ones who want to be mm -hmm. uh, delivered via B-Post. Yep. How do you plan to uh, deliver on time for the Christmas period all those customers? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. So uh, actually, we have a lot of orders uh, that are now sent with B-Post. Uh, and um, we have those uh, different storage locations that are far from each other. So we had to think about an optimized way of getting those products out of our stock, out of our stocks. Uh, so first with the picking. And um, to optimize the picking, we decided to use wave transfers. So the wave transfers here uh, allows us, if I go in my inventory module, uh, here I can see that I have six pickings to make. It means, it means that I really have to go six times in the different uh, storage area, but I can make it uh, in a simpler, simpler way thanks to the... Um, here I will show the different operations that I have to do. So I see the list of operations that I have to do in my warehouse for the picking. I can now regroup this by location. And just by uh, doing that, I can uh, select here the brute cider. So for the location brute cider, I will directly create a wave transfer. And Chloe, you will be responsible for this one. Mm. OK. Now I can do the same. I will create another wave transfer for the condro. Um, yeah. This one will be for me. And finally, I will do the same for the condrin, like this. And this one will be for you as well. And so this is super useful because now if I go in my wave transfers here, I can see that Chloe, um, you have the information about the products that you have to, to go and pick uh, in the Condrin zone. This one is yeah the Condrin, right? Mm -hmm. And I can even print here um, a paper that I can directly give you. And so you will understand uh, directly which products you have to pick. And okay. so, yeah, this is super uh, useful. And uh, now that everything is done with those wave transfer, I will just validate those in order to say, okay, the products are not in our picking zone anymore, but uh, not, uh, sorry, not in our stock anymore, but in the packing zone. Okay. Yeah, we won't do it in real life because it's yeah. uh, far away from here. Yeah, that's right. So now let's do this. And our waves are validated. Okay, great that this option exists in Odoo. Uh, do you have any other ideas of a uh, new feature, for example, from version 17 that could improve our flow? Yes, actually, uh, ye yesterday night, um, I checked a little bit what was new in Odoo uh, version 17. And currently, you have to understand, I will give you a little context, but we are uh, in our storage areas, we are putting our bottles in large cartons, large boxes, which are closed. And currently, with our removal strategy, FEFO, um, Odoo makes us open a, a large carton, then another one, then another one, and we end up with a lot of uh, op large car cartons that are open in our, in our storage area, which is not um, handy at all. Mm -hmm. And thanks to um, something which is new in Odoo, so a new removal strategy, which is the leads, uh, list packages, um, Odoo will think in a smarter way in order to make us open only uh, one carton if it's possible. So here, for example, um, a client place an order of for 13 bottles. Mm -hmm. If we have the list package removal strategy, Odoo will tell us, okay, you have to open the carton number two because thanks to that, I will avoid having multiple cartons open in my warehouse, which will be uh, super useful to have an optimized uh, storage yeah. area. So we are thinking about using this removal strategy in the future. It might be uh, useful. Yeah, it's a good yeah. idea. 
so now if I recap, uh, for the customer coming pick up his uh, products in store, everything is OK, yeah. everything works. And for the customers uh, who want to be delivered via B-Post, uh, everything is in the packing zone, all right? Yes, that's okay. right. Uh, that's right. It's in the packing zone, and we will we will have to to check that together because we will have to do a lot of packings during uh, the Christmas period, and uh, so we have to be sure that everything is up and running. So if you don't mind, you can just go yeah. in the uh, packing zone, and here I will um, I will open the packing that uh, we have to do. Uh, so for Juliet Chasseur here. Um, actually, what I invite you to do is um, to uh, do it in real life, and I will do it yeah, at the same course. time in Udo. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, you can uh, put the products in a pack. So, I will do the same here in my database, like that. So, as you can see on my detailed operations, which give me uh, details of what has been reserved for the transfer, I can see that my products are now in my pack number four, so that's quite useful. Um, now you can, I will validate the transfer, so you can just bring the box to the output zone, please. Thank you. And uh, what I will also do is that I will print here the delivery slip, which is uh, quite useful, and we put it uh, always in. Um, the, the packs that we send to our customers, and finally, the return slip, which is super useful. And if you don't mind, you can uh, take it. I just of print course. them out. You can put them in a box, please. Yeah. And finally, as you can see here, uh, Odoo automatically generated the, um, the label uh, to send it thanks to Bpost. So uh, here, I will just give, you, give it to you, and you can directly paste it, uh, please, on the box. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now that everything is in the output zone, we are almost uh, ready for to send everything off, right? Yes, we are almost ready. So now uh, we can proceed to the, the shipping. Uh, we just have to think about one last thing. Uh, Bpost asks us to, to regroup our orders according to the destination country because they have a driver that is coming for uh, the boxes for France, another for the boxes for Belgium. And so um, that's why we, um, we use something in Odoo, but I don't know if you have an idea of what we are using in Odoo for that. Uh, we could use batch transfers. Uh, yes, uh, we use batch, uh, batch transfers uh, because here we are regrouping orders together. So we really have uh, this idea of having different orders. I can show you here in Odoo. So we have differently orders that we will regroup. Earlier with wave transfers, we were regrouping different operations. So that's a bit different here. So we will use uh, batch transfers. That's right. And we will even push it further because here we will use automatic batch transfers. So here I set up that we uh, wanted to create automatically different, uh, different batches according to the destination country. And so here, as you can see, I don't have 13, I have 13 orders to process, but actually I only, only have two batches to process, which is really, really handy because when the, um, here for example, we, uh, let's say that the driver is coming for the batch for France, I can just here set the quantities and validate my batch. And just like that, all my products are out of my output zone because the driver for France uh, has arrived at our place. Okay. So it's quite um, useful to, to use for, for us. Okay. Okay, and just a question. Uh, I don't want to, to have to send uh, manually an email to each of our customers to tell them that we, we have uh, sent uh, their product. So is there an automatic way to manage it? Yes, yes, um, that's right. We might have a lot of orders to, um, to process and we don't want to send uh, manually no. an email to those customers. So I checked a little bit in the inventory settings of uh, our database and I found something which is quite useful. But um, here, if I take the orders that are done, let's try to find 
the one of um, Juliette Chasseur here, which is done. Um, now, uh, Odoo autom automatically sent an email to the customer with the information that uh, his order has been shipped, and also he received his reference and so on for um, his, uh, his box. So that's okay, quite that's useful. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, I also had a question for you, but is it possible for him to see uh, actually the status of his order? Yes, you can see the status of the delivery uh, from the portal. So if you go yeah, on the portal preview, and okay. the other, as you can see, is shipped. So that's okay. super easy. Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, regarding the returns, if the customer is not happy with uh, his bottles, is it easy to them to return it? or? Uh, yes, actually it is, and it is even um, easier now with the new version of Odoo because, um, as um, I told you, we printed the return slip. So uh, I can just show you the return slip here again. Oops, like this. Actually, I have it here. And so this is uh, quite new. We, um, the customer received this, um, this slip in his box. And now if he wants to return the, the box, he knows a little bit more about what he has to do. And this sheet is super handy for us in the warehouse because when we receive the box, we open it. We have this paper in front of us. We scan the uh, barcode. And actually, it will do the same as if we were here creating directly a return for the delivery order. So just like that. Uh, by scanning my barcodes, it creates um, here a return and I can directly validate this return to say, okay, there was a problem with the box. Uh, it is now in our, um, in our stock. Mm -hmm. And uh, one last thing, I told you that it was super important for us to track our products. Um, and uh, this is why um, I, we are tracking our products because thanks to that we have this traceability report. So when we will have a return, we will always go and check what happened with our products. And so here, for example, I can see the bridge cider when it arrived uh, back in the stock, when it went out and so on. So I have all the information. Um, and just uh, yeah, one question, uh, one last question. Um, do you know if it's possible for them to see a little bit how it what happened with mm -hmm. their return and so on? Yes, still from the portal. Actually, since version 17, it's new. You can see the status of the return on the other. So okay. yes, if so you go on the other preview. On the customer portal yes, as well? Yes, okay. as you can see, so the return has been received. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay that's so super handy. Yeah, Antoine, I think we covered everything. Everything seems to work s properly for the e-commerce period, uh, for the, sorry, the Christmas period. So um, we can now relax. And um, thank you for your attention. We will yeah, now proceed to the Q&A session. So again, don't hesitate to scan the QR code in order to ask us a question in the pad. Can you hear me? No? No. Yeah? Now it's working? Oh. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Antoine. Thank, thank you, Chloe, for sharing with us Christmas vibes today. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have some questions for you guys. I, I think the first one will be for you, Chloe. Okay. Uh, is there a way to make the extra fields more attractive within Odoo? I can assume B2B want more specific product details. Yes, of course, you can actually here, I just added a remark section, but you can add uh, many different sections. You can add, uh, for example, a selection field or actually whatever you want. So yeah, here it was just an example, but you can make it more attractive than my extra step. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and actually for this section, it all depends on the fields that you have on the order. So you can add all the fields, existing fields that you have on mm -hmm. the order. If it's selection field, a many to one or something else, you can put it there directly and the customer will be able to choose whatever he wants. Uh, we should go there. Okay. okay. Um, we have uh, another question regarding discounts. And 
someone asked, would it be possible to show a discount if a product is out of stock and the customer is happy to wait for a longer duration of delivery? That might yes. be a bit tricky. Yes, or yeah. of course, we can. Actually, here we decided to don't let the customer buy the product if it's out of stock, but you can decide to let the customer buy it and just display a message to say that it's going to take a longer time. Okay, mm -hmm. and then they are warned when the, yeah. the, the, the ah, product no, is wait. still available. Yeah, no. here they, they are waiting, they are ready to pay an extra fee to, okay. uh, to have the product ready. No, in that case it's not possible, no. sorry. Okay. Um, we have another question about delivery methods. Can you explain us what are the different delivery methods available uh, in Odoo? Yes, um, so it's quite, uh, it would be easier to show you thanks to here um, uh, a database here uh, if you go in the inventory module you will see something about the shipping connectors so you have multiple connectors in Odoo uh, UPS, FedEx, B-Post and so on um, so you have to be careful because um, for example FedEx is for uh, more, more for the United States um, and so on so yeah you have to choose your um, your shipping connector uh, and also you are always able I have some uh, customer uh, which are just um, here creating their own shipping method so you can always create a shipping method with based on rules of or with a fixed price of pickup in store and so on and so um, yeah you are really free to for example if you create a shipping method based on rules you could uh, set a price according to the weight of your products according to the distance and so on so it can be uh, useful as well Okay, great. Uh, someone asked if it's possible to uh, show show him uh, how you can customize the list boxes uh, on on Odoo directly. Um, yeah, it will take a little bit of time to okay. show you a demo right now. But for the demo, uh, a demo like that, uh, I will be happy to answer um, at the inventory booth, which is right there. Uh, but actually, it's really a new removal strategy, and uh, you will see that in the reservation, the reservation process, it will only uh, it will reserve the products that are in boxes, but in a smarter way. So yeah. We will take time to, to answer this question at the inventory booth. Okay, yeah. great. Um, we have two questions regarding um, shipping label. So uh, the first one is, do we always need to download the shipping label as a PDF and print it manually? Or is there a solution in Odoo standard to print automatically? For example, if you got more than 1,000 uh, orders per day. Uh, yes, so if you, have, uh, you are not um, a little uh, company anymore, you have a lot of orders, we always invite you to um, install an IoT box. So now you have uh, an IoT box that is also in the cloud, so it's a little bit more easy. And uh, thanks to that, it won't, you won't have this step of having to download the paper and then print it. It will automatically be printed because you will be, Odoo will be directly connected to your printer. And so it will uh, help you to, to go faster with your deliveries. Okay, yeah. amazing. Another mm -hmm. question regarding uh, shipping labels. Uh, the person say, I love the return slip, but uh, to go one step further, do you manage also the generation of shipping label for the return of the customer? So uh, for those uh, return labels, it all depends on the shipping connector. Um, I can show you, for example, but um, you have to know that if you have, um, for example, uh, let's, I don't know if it I will be able to show you that here. Um, yeah, here, this field, generate return label. Um, so it all depends on the um, delivery method that you are using or the connector because generating a label is sometimes something that you will directly pay, uh, sometimes not. And so you can choose on the connector directly if you want to generate this label. So it's possible. But uh, yeah, you just have to check on the connector that you are using. Uh, okay, if you so want it to depends. It. It's case by it case. It depends, yes. Okay. Again, from uh, the return, uh, a lot of unhappy customer, it seems. <laughs> uh, can a client return a product directly from the website? Uh, actually, not for the moment in standard, but we have a workaround. So you can just create a form on your website so the customer can enter all his information and the, in the information related to the product he wants to return. And then it creates a ticket uh, in your Odoo database and you can manage it. But the customer cannot directly return and print something from the website for the moment. Okay. But maybe we are for the next version. It. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, we have uh, some question again about return. If we do a return with a third step shipping, in, what, in which location does the product come back 
in stock, output or stock? So here I configured it uh, as the stock location, uh, but actually let's take uh, let's take that together. Let's take here an order which is uh, done where we don't have an, uh, a return, this one for example. So when I will click on the return, you will see, uh, so actually mine is output, um, you will see that you are able to choose here a location that is, um, yeah, you can choose the location that you want. You see that you, I just if uh, I only have two locations here. Uh, I'm not able to choose more than two locations because actually, if I go here on my locations, I can add, for example, that um, yeah, on my warehouse stock location, for example, you can see that it's not a return location. If I add, I uh, clicked um, mm -hmm. on this little box here, it will now be a return location and I will be able to choose it as a return location. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, we have another question, a bit more related to subscription, because uh, the person is saying selling a box is great, but I, what if, if I want to sell subscription with monthly de deliveries of boxes? Uh, yeah, that's a more uh, subscription question. Uh, I don't know if you... Is that yeah. a, is that a actually, I'm not sure of the, the answer, so I would prefer to, to answer at the booth. Okay. So, yeah. All right. But I think we can... I, I think we cannot manage it, but let's make sure at the booth. Okay. So you can come yeah, and we'll look into let's it together. Let's check together at the booth. Mm -hmm. It will be uh, easier. We are no, not experts of uh, subscription. Mm, maybe for you, uh, Chloe, uh, mm -hmm. how can I see the list of all the emails that uh, people will have their emails if the product is out of stock? Uh, actually, you can see all the emails uh, sent and uh, received from the models. So if you go in the technical settings, I don't know exactly where, but you can find it, of course, as it's a record created in Odoo. Okay. Uh, but you don't have a menu by default uh, to display all those uh, customers uh, in, yeah, like in the standard version of Odoo. Okay. But you can find it somewhere in the all settings. Right. We can look into it also at the booth Together. if you want to. All right. <laughs> um, we have a question about uh, paying later. So if customer selects the pickup at store and pay later, mm -hmm. the product is not reserved as it's a quotation and not a SO. Can we solve this? Um, you could solve this uh, thanks to an automated action mm -hmm. which will uh, automatically confirm the quotation, but you have to confirm your quotation in order to have a reservation of your stock. So you can manage this di manage, manage it thanks to a little bit of custo, uh, customization, but in standard Odoo, a quotation does not reserve any stock. No. Okay. Uh, do you m how do you manage palette and packages in Odoo? Ah, that's, <laughs> that's uh, a very wide question. That's a very, very wide question. <laughs> um, so first, uh, if we are talking about uh, really this idea of package, uh, I invite you to add the setting packages, which is the first one uh, in the inventory module. And then um, actually on each uh, stock uh, move that you will have, for example, let me uh, take here one that is already in the packing zone, you will have this little put in pack and so here you will be able to choose if you want to put uh, the products in a pack automatically or not. So here I can click on it and uh, by uh, saving this um, you can see that on my detailed operation the products that are reserved are now in a pack. So yeah, if you want more info uh, we can always discuss it uh, at the boot together but yeah, that's the, the basic, uh, basic of it. Okay. Just checking other question. Um, is it possible to share a tracking link in the email from Bpost? That's a that's a very nice question, actually. Yeah, that's <laughs> a very nice question. That could be a very <laughs> nice um, feature. As well. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a very nice uh, feature. So, can you repeat just to be sure uh, that can I we it well? uh, Is it possible to share a tracking link uh, yeah. in the email from, mm -hmm. for example, from Bpost? Um, I Where don't the customer know if it's can just follow his I think delivery. it depends on the uh, shipping connector. Again, I'm not sure for this one. Uh, let me take back the one that we just uh, sent. Mm -hmm. Here, he received an email, and you see that there is the reference that is here. Yeah, and so here, yeah, it's uh, on the side. So, um, yeah, thanks to that, you can uh, you have directly the, the reference, and actually, you have a link on the reference. So, by clicking on it, uh, you will have uh, the information. Uh, of your where is your uh, where is your box? Okay, so that's, yeah. great. that's cool. great. Yeah, very cool. Um, then we have like some again an unhappy customer wants to return some product, yeah. but only the one bottle, for example. Is that feasible to manage 
the return of on one product from a kit? Um, yeah, from a kit, uh, if I go on a delivery, let's take another one. We will do again another return. For this one, as you can see here, I'm always able to uh, say, OK, I did not uh, receive all the bottles back, but only the brute cider, for example. So I will just do this and I will return. And thanks to that, I'm just returning my brute cider. Uh, I can validate it. And if I go back on my transfer, um, so I will uh, have uh, the information about the return, which is here. And mm -hmm. I know that uh, yeah, I received my brute cider back in my stock. Okay, okay. very cool. Um, we have uh, more uh, questions for you guys regarding, um, do you have any tips for B2B e-commerce? <laughs> That's a uh, very, right? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Usually for B2B uh, customers, uh, you don't want to show the prices or you don't want to let uh, any other customers buy your products. You want that the B2B customer is uh, connected to your website in order to uh, buy something on it and see your product prices. So to do so, we have an option since, ver since version uh, 16 here, which is called Prevent Sales for Zero Priced Product. And actually, w you can activate this and it will replace the add to cart button by a contact us button for the people not connected and uh, the product price won't be uh, visible for those customers. So that's usually used for B2B customers and that's uh, super handy. Yeah. yeah. But I think you can see all the configurations linked to this uh, in a talk uh, dedicated to the B2B uh, website. Which, okay. which is tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow? Yeah. All right. Don't miss that one. No. Um, we have another question, and the answer interests me a lot. Uh, can Odu propose me to pack products in the most suitable box? For example, if I enter all the products and box dimension, weight, size, and so on. Uh, um, I think for this one is uh, still a limitation of Odoo. Uh, it's not yet possible. We already improved here the, the removal strategy for the for the, the package and um, and how you can manage your, your package in Odoo. But we need to know in which pack you have to, to put your products in a smarter way. Um, yeah, I think it's still a limitation here. Okay, we will have to talk to the PO. We then. will work yeah. on <laughs> it, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, still maybe we still have some time for questions? Uh, yes. Um, what is your favorite new features of this new version? Um, Actually, I don't know because I didn't see the the what's new e-commerce um, uh, inventory. But I don't know what's uh, yours. For f I, my my idea for inventory, it's something um, I did not uh, show. Uh, to you guys, it's super simple, but um, I uh, often had uh, customers which are a bit um, yeah, annoyed about uh, the fact that uh, it's a bit difficult to change a, a product from a place to another uh, here in the inventory adjustment menu. And so now if I take some products uh, here that I, for example, in my output zone, I understand that those products should not be in the output zone, but in the stock. I'm now um, able to uh, relocate the, the, um, 